welcome to the new Form Technology Research Center. And Frank Dester and all the people that are enthusiastic about his work. I think I won't give it a little trim, trim job with the razor. And Richard, where is Richard? There you are. Um, has most graciously gifted this space to Frank. And they met in the fall of 2011. And Richard came to Frank with a question about water and cleaning up water. And he met. Uh, uh, Frank, through two ladies that are here, Rosemary and Leanne. I don't think Leanne's here, but Rosemary is. I'm here. Oh, there she is. <laughs> She's and here. It's a testament to Richard's flirtatious nature. There you go. All right. Well, you know, everything evolves, and I'm always interested to watch that. So here we have Richard. Please let everyone, if you'd stand up, and Dave and Teresa. So we're able to be here in Frank, and all those that enter in are able to continue this work really because of Richard. So this is on. Um, thank you. On the space and to get ready for everyone today. So thank you. The next person that I'm going to introduce is Jim, and he is with Raphael Medical Foundation, the president, and he gifted the first seed grant for Frank's new initiative. So thank you. Um, we, have, we have found it to support medical work and I felt that this was a, an appropriate uh, thing to support. It's one of our first grants since we reformed the association. And yes, I think, you know, what the thing is, what I'm excited about what we've done is we've provided seed money there's something special about the quality of seed money. Before I start picking on Frank, which I plan to do very shortly here, uh, some of you have not seen the book that was written by uh, Seth Miller about Frank. So if you haven't picked it up yet, unfortunately this is my copy. Actually it's a friend's copy I brought up here. And I have him sign it so I can take it back. But wonderful pictures and which kind of leads me in to the Venus. There's a picture of the Venus. If you look up on the ceiling back here, you'll see the Venus. Now, keep that in mind, but I'll come back to it in a moment. Frank and I taught together at Fordham College. Fordham College, of those you may not be aware of it, is a little bird between Fresno and Bakersfield. And it was a, a wonderful college of great instructors and lousy administrators. <laughs> I had an English professor that came up to me and said, we do a great job teaching our students in spite of the administration. <laughs> okay, one of the really great teachers at that college was this young man right here. He built homes throughout the city with his students and taught them skills that some of them are still using today, taught them occupations that they're still using today. And then he had the audacity to think that maybe he could do something really for a small group of people, and so he became a quasi-administrator. Unfortunately, he did it so well that all the other administrators hated him. Oh, and so yeah. For a year and a half, while he was doing great things, students would come into my, I was, I was director of the library, and I was also 
professor of education, but basically I was the library director there. Students would come to me and say, wow, do you know what Frank did for me? Tell me. And they would save, or save my life. It got me out of the gutter. I remember a lady saying to me, I was, I was living out of a shopping cart. I've got a job because of Frank. I've got an occupation because of Frank. But it was brutal that he was going through it. About every other day, he'd come into my office and slump in and says, man, this is really killing me. And he would tell me stories about what they were doing to him and what they were fighting. And we would work together to try to come up with some way to protect him. Because he was doing such a great job. Totally not the way administrators work, at least in our college. Uh, Finally. Nowhere, Frank. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yes, we've already discussed that. Finally, it got to the place where there was no choice, but he had to leave. Okay, and not under the ban of a greatness that he should have left. He was really basically kicked out of there by some really ugly people who, 12 months later, all got a voice vote of no confidence, and they were gone, thank goodness. But Frank was out. Now, during this time, he was going through some very, very, very difficult times. And probably the most traumatic was a wonderful lady, his mom. Uh, <laughs> hang on a second. <laughs> I got a chance to meet her. She's a great lady. Anyways, passed away. The college couldn't care less. Okay, I mean, it was just, that was just the scope of things. So Frank left, really, with being beat up pretty bad and went up to Sacramento. And that's where the magic began. Now, because I was worried about my buddy, I was constantly in talk with him. I'd drive up and see him, find out where he's going. He moved into an apartment and was going. And then he met this beautiful young lady right here. Oh, <laughs> so, and we got to pick on her. And then <laughs> they were walking on the Sacramento River, and he picked up the little bit of mud. Pour up a little ball of mud and stuff seven sticks into it. Now, I came up about two weeks later and on the kitchen table was this little ball of mud and these seven sticks and he was so energized. He says, do you see this? Do you, do you have any? I see I see so much in this. I said, you, you don't have any idea. I said, no, I know, but you're telling me. I mean, and he, he, he did this abusive. Oh, I, 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 in my mind, I see pictures. I, I, see, I see geometry. I see high circles, all kinds of stuff. So over the next few years, every time I come up, he showed me something new. And the Venus, was one of the things I came up to see. And there was this beautiful, huge thing and one of his exhibits that he did. And then he moved, of course, come to San Francisco. He was going to school, working on a doctorate. And the Venus was carefully taken and put away by a friend. Uh, I, who, 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 oh, give me the hand, who held it up? Who brought it in yesterday? Somebody here. Brought it in. Oh, the Venus? oh, there, you. Yeah, I thought you would. There you go. Anyways, because of it, the Venus lives. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because Jim was saying he was working in a small space. You go in this room and you go back to the back room, the back room. That's the amount of space Frank had. Okay, we're talking tiny. I remember going to his apartment and he would pull up a little saw and he'd work on something, and then he'd put it back into it, and then he'd bring out another tool, okay, <laughs> little by little, and then he would create magic. And his vision was always out there, just wonderful vision of, I could do this, I could do that. It's so close. Magic, magic, always. What, what much more fun could you have than that? And suddenly to walk in this place and see Venus back home. Wagging. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good.
demonstration from Mary Ann, an amazing Eurythmist. So whoever has a little bit of courage and arms that can walk in the air, please come and join me. It's more than 10 people this life. And Mary, you have this behind you. Yeah, I know. Uh, that's why I want to do that. And we made a circle. Look at the arms. See, we can put our arms out. So come in a circle. Come in a circle. Okay, by the way, everybody, do you know where your liver is? Yes. Did they touch your liver? Let me see if they touch your liver. Yeah, everybody has one in case you're wondering. <laughs> okay, so take your take your right hand. Okay, take your right hand. Ah, this is the right one. Okay, and the left one. Okay, and put the left one on the liver. Okay, and the right one on the heart. Right, and you can come together. Don't be shy. No, no. Okay. So now what we're going to do is come a little closer. And I'm going to reach for your hand, and I'm going to reach for your hand. And we have to make sure that all of the right arms are on top. Are they all on top? So now make a nice little circle instead of an egg. Okay, because we all, put your elbow in. There you go. And that makes a beautiful form to start with, all right? So that you have an idea. Now what we're going to do is a reversal, because we're going to be different afterwards than we are before. So what I want you all to do is to close your eyes and have a moment of silence and the same with the audience. And keep your eyes closed and raise your right arm and go to the right. And lift those arms as high as you possibly can. And down. Okay. Now we can go back if you want. Okay. Again, now this time we have to turn to the left. All arms up and turn to the left. So when we were out there, we had a reversal. And that's to do with air the way that Francesca talks about. It. So there we go. Thank you. Nice. There we go. The first time Marianne did that was up at the Chico lecture. Boom. So, you're well, welcome, all of you. I uh, really appreciate you being here. Uh, it's kind of a celebration in a way that it's new. What that means is, is that there is nothing like it on the earth before, thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. Okay, because these are new forms, and it's going to be developing a technology around those forms. And I have found 20 new forms that have never been on this planet before, and I cannot do it alone. I need help, okay? And then this, if you work on this with me, then you will learn how you can transform things and take that into your life. And the form is only there for the process to learn from. Because once the form is there, it's finished. Okay? But you are not finished. You're still growing. And you can still work on transforming another form or yourself. So, uh, this is the first time. The, when the platonic forms came in, okay, that was the first time. That really was something new. And that's the thousands of years ago. But nothing since. Everything, 99% as you see on the website, you see on the internet, whatever, it's still the old stuff. Nothing wrong with the old stuff, it's just that's old. And you can learn from it. But need to take off now, the 20th century, okay. Uh, I discovered this in 2000, uh, January. Okay, so that's when it came in. So, so I'd like to open this, uh, this news research center with this. Um, this uh, is the day that Rudolf Steiner died 88 years ago. Rudolf Steiner inspired me. That's what I saw. I went to his building. And what I saw there inspired me so that when I turned 60, I started doing this work. One of the things that I knew and I really liked was a seal that Rudolf Steiner 
made, and it's based on an uh, evolution of uh, not only of the human heart, but of, of the, uh, the earth process. And the first form that he came into was, was warmth. Okay, and he made a seal that represented warmth. I took that seal, it was two-dimensional, flat, and I brought it up into a bell. And the reason I did that is because this seven-sided form, when you spin, it turns into a bell. Now, the geometry of the bell has never been known. No one has ever known the geometry behind it. They, I asked, how do you do it? They said, just trial and error, we found out it was a shape. So I took that shape and I put it into the seal. And this is the seal in three dimensions. And so uh, this is the warmth. And I'm bringing the opening of the new, new, new technology research center with this belt.